this song was written by my producer, Shane Roark. It is a very, very powerful song. Biblically, it's as correct as we can get because none of us have ever seen heaven. We don't know what it's like. We, uh, we can imagine. I've done so many funerals over the years and there's always been a part of me that's a little envious because that child of God is looking at. Can't imagine what it's like. Can't imagine what they're seeing. Uh, but the name of this song is Home. And uh, just close your eyes and, and worship with me right now. is finally here I feel it the battle that I fought so long is finally ending now I can hear my family crying as they question why as they question how sound of distant singing, a multitude of voices as they sing amazing grace. Now there are angels all around me as a voice seems to call me and the room fills with Standing at the gates of the city, it's shining brighter than the lights of a thousand suns. My hands are young, my feet are strong, my body now is painless. I want to cry for the joy I feel, but the tears they will not. I see a figure through the crowd. He's coming toward my way. Six. 
Ghost, King of Kings, speaks. Your
just me, but it looks real good to have a choir full of people. Thank you. Thank you. But you may have noticed that there's two or three seats that are still vacant up there, so if you would like to fill one of those, uh, I'm sure that uh, someone's arm could be twisted so that, uh, so that you might have that spot. Please take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 37. Jeremiah, chapter 37. I would say, following that song, that uh, the Bible's very clear. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord God Almighty. That will happen whether you like it or not. No matter what, that will happen. God is in control and there is coming that day. So uh, since none of us know when that day might be, when we will stand before the ultimate judge, wouldn't it be a really good thing for us all to be ready to go today? Should that change? It would be a good thing for us to be. Now listen, I don't, don't think that I'm, I'm saying we all need to get on the bus now and we need to go right now. Uh, I know some of us would like to stick around for a little while longer, but the fact remains that we don't have any control over that. We need to be prepared, maybe not ready, but prepared for that ultimate appointment with our Creator, our Redeemer, and our God. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 37, uh, Zedekiah gives us a brilliant picture of what many people in this world expect. Uh, what they do when the chips are down. What they do when things don't go their way. Uh, it's, the, it's the flow of people that from time to time come through my office that have gotten everything in their life so absolutely messed up that they just can't seem to function anymore. And in brokenness, they finally come and they want to sit down and they want to talk to the preacher and, and they want me to fix it. I can't. I don't have that within my, uh, within my tool bag. <laughs> That's, that's not something that I can do. And, and the thing is that when we ignore God for so long, uh, when we ignore the truth of His Word, when we ignore the prompting and the conviction of the Spirit, why is it that we think we ought to be able to go to Him and in an instant He's going to fix it anyway? Does He owe us? Think about it for a moment. Zedekiah comes to God's servant. He had exhausted everything else. If you go back and you read previous chapters, they had taken the Word of God that had been written. And they had taken a little knife and they'd cut it up in strips and they'd thrown it into the heart so that it was burned with fire. God told Jeremiah to write that down again and send it back. Things weren't going their way. Matter of fact, the uh, Chaldeans were at the gate, if you will. And Zedekiah, in his uh, desire to get things fixed, he calls for God's spokesman and he has this very timeless question Is there a word from the Lord? Well, Jeremiah. Uh, and I'm thankful that he was able to say this. Uh, he spoke not only to Zedekiah, but he spoke to all ages. There is a word from the Lord. Matter of fact, if, if you want to get real specific with it this morning, there's, uh, there's actually 773,000 plus words from the Lord. And they're divided into 66 books and we call that the Old and the New Testament. There is a word from the Lord. That word from the Lord will help you. That word from the Lord will strengthen you. That word from the Lord will bring the power of God to salvation into your life. But not if you ignore it. Not if you ignore it. Not if you try to displace it. Not if you try to explain your way around it. Not if you're not taking it seriously. But it is the power of God unto salvation. 
Paul declared that all Scripture, that would be Genesis through Revelation, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That's 2 Timothy 3.16. And of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul was very specific. Romans 1.16, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Ultimate power, ultimate authority. It's all right here in this book. And God has sent this love letter to us. He sent it to all of humanity. And it will absolutely transform your life if you will pay attention to it. Think about Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a unique man. Ezekiel heard from God. He saw visions. He saw things that would scare the ordinary person to death. And one of those visions, God just showed him a valley full of dry bones. And, and he said to Ezekiel, he said, I want you to preach to that valley full of dry bones. Ezekiel, I think, looked out and he said, you know, God, that's a pretty tough crowd. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can get a lot out of this crowd here. They, they're all dead. Their bones are bleached out in the sand. What am I supposed to do? Uh, that valley full of dry bones, of course, represented Israel in, in so many ways. But that valley full of dry bones also, I believe today, represents every individual who goes through a dry, uh, formless kind of worship. Just a, a formality rather than a real worship. And they, and they falsely consider that to be worship. And that's not what it is at all. It's just a dry thing. Uh, Jeremiah also had gone through his own share of discouragement. If you go back to uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, uh, he won't quit. I mean, he's gotten tired of this whole thing. And he, he, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. You know what? I love this part. He couldn't. <laughs> he could not because the Word of God, the Word of God was a fire within his heart. It was in his bones. He could not escape from it even if he had wanted to. He couldn't get away from it. It was there. I want to say to you this morning that the Word of God becomes that kind of fire to you when you hide it in your heart. The Word of God becomes that kind of power to you when you place it in your heart, when you're trusting the One who sent that Word, when you're believing in the One who does have the power over life and death. This Word of God is a precious thing to us today. And today I, I just simply want to thank God that yes, there is a word from the Lord. There's a word for me. There is a word for you. If we will listen, if we will hear this word from the Lord, that's what it will take to fix the brokenness of humanity. That's what it takes to set the captive free. That's what it takes to bring God's power of salvation into an individual life. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 37, verses 16 and 17, when Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon and into the cabins, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king said and took him out. And the king asked him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah said, There is. For, said he, thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Let's pray. Father, I'm so thankful this morning that we can trust you. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with all that we have and with all that we are. By the power of your Spirit, I pray that you would speak this word into our hearts today. Lord, draw us out of our shell that we might be that servant that you would be pleased with. There is one here today who's, who's teetering on the brink of decision. 
They're trying to decide what it is that you would have them do with their lives. Father, I pray that that peace of your spirit would direct them. That power of your spirit would encourage them. If there is one here today without Christ as Savior, Father, I know today can be an eternity altering experience for them. Bless your word as it speaks to our hearts in Jesus' name. The word of God, the power of God, there's a few things that I would call to your attention this morning. Uh, one thing is that word from the Lord will save the down and out. Uh, I've seen evidence, and so have you, of, of God bringing conviction uh, in people's lives over the years. I've, I've watched as, as people, uh, and this, look, I'm not talking to any one of you specifically, please don't misunderstand. Over the years, I've seen people white knuckle the pew in front of them. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They were doing everything that they could do to hold on and not let go and let God have His way in their life. And they just, just white knuckle that pew and just... Just, you could see it all over their face. And I'm thinking, my Lord, if they would just let go, what peace you could bring to their life, what power you could bring to their soul, if they would just turn loose, let go, and let you have your way in their lives. And, and I've seen people let go. But all too often, I've seen them keep holding on. Keep holding on and keep holding back. Almost as if they were afraid if they let go, God might do something special in their life. I, I, I don't know what it is, that, that unfounded fear that we have. If, uh, if we just say, God, here I am, use me however you want to, we think somehow He's going to put us in a mud hut in Africa eating grass. I don't know what it is. We, you know, we got that un unnecessary fear that God is going to call us to do something horrible. And the truth is... Whatever it is that God calls you to do will be the absolute, ultimate blessing in your life. It will bless you more than anything else that you could possibly imagine if you just simply say, Yes, Lord, I will do what you want me to do. Here's a, here's a fact today. This word of the Lord that we're talking about, Everyone in here this morning is headed to a final destination. No, just not. Uh, that way I know that uh, if your head comes back up that you haven't written it off. Uh, we, uh, we are headed toward a final destination. Beloved, it is heaven or it is hell. Period. Where are you headed this morning? If you were to leave this world today, do you have that promise of God in your heart that heaven will be your final home? I can't imagine laying my head down at night and not having the confidence of God in my heart that heaven will be where I stand. I can't imagine that. There was a woman well, she was a Samaritan woman. And everything about her uh, bespoke the fact that Jesus, being a Jewish man, would have absolutely nothing to do with her, that he wouldn't even speak to her. But if you remember that story, Jesus had a message for that woman. And that message was, if you would only ask, I will give you water of life that you would never have to drink again. And for that, for that woman who had gone through all sorts of problems in her life and, and, and she had swapped men several times, for that woman, the Word of God was the water of life. The Word of God was the truth that changed her heart. There was a man named Bartimaeus. He was blind. And, and you remember the story. This was a pitiful sight. He sat by the road 
begging. And in, in my mind, I see a man with a cloak over him, and he sat there with the with the foot traffic and, and the donkeys going by so long that a, that a layer of dust has coated that cloak that he had about him. There he sat begging uh, to uh, have something to eat, begging to make a living. Uh, Jesus had a word for him. That word absolutely changed his life. His sight was restored. Can you? You know, I just, my mind won't really wrap around it. One instant, he's sitting in darkness, and the next, there is a glorious light, and the first thing he sees is Jesus. What a, what a thought that is this morning. There is none so vile and wicked that a word from the Lord will not save them. There is none too good that they don't need that word from the Lord to help them through this life. None so good, none so bad that we don't need what God has to offer to us today. Uh, the word of the Lord will save if pride is let fall by the one side. You know, I, I, I've often thought that uh, the, the distance between heaven and hell is, is probably somewhere in the, in the 16, 18 inch range. That's the distance from right here to right here. Because the heart wants to believe. The heart wants to trust. And the head said, no, it, 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 it's pride. Pride will not allow us, if we let it win, pride will not allow us to humble ourselves in God's sight and receive His gift of everlasting life. The Word of the Lord will save the down and out. It will also save the up and out. I'll mention a few names to you this morning. J.C. Penney, uh, Andrew Kraft, Cyrus McCormick, J.P. Morgan. All of these names, you, we, we recognize those names because we think these are rich people. Absolutely, these were rich people. But they were also faithful Christian people. You'd think somebody with all that money, they wouldn't need God. Look, it's not about them. They can't take that with them. They understood, even in their earthly wealth, that they could not carry that with them into the, uh, the next world. That, that in eternity meant absolutely nothing. So these people became faithful Christians. They were all millionaires, but they were all born-again millionaires. Uh, Go back to the New Te Testament. Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the Jews, he was a Pharisee. He was, a, he was a, 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 in the top flight of people in Israel. And yet he found out that uh, he had to be born again, just like everyone else. Paul talked about a woman named Lydia. She was a seller of purple. She was a businesswoman. Uh, I think for her to be singled out, she had some great standing within the community. The thing that set her apart, she was a spiritual woman. She was a leader. She was a believer. They met together to worship the risen Lord. Uh, there was a nobleman named Jairus that figured out that the only hope he had in this world for his child was Jesus. At the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Salvation comes to the lost soul. At the name of Jesus, power comes to the child of God that is committed, that is willing to follow Him, that is willing to allow God to have His way in their life. At the name of Jesus, mountains are moved. What kind of mountain, preacher? I don't know. Tell me what's the mountain that you're facing this morning. What is the mountain that you are facing? Is it, uh, is it relationships? Is it, uh, is it money? Is it, uh, well, you know, you fill in the blank. What is it? that mountain in your life right now? I'm going to join Paul this morning and say that I am a fool of Christ. I believe that whatever that mountain is that you are facing this morning, that in the name of Jesus, it can be removed. I believe that. I truly believe that this morning. You can't be too rich or too poor for a word from the Lord to not do a word in your life if you're living. It'll 
save the down and out. It'll save the up and out. It will stabilize the in and out. And this is where the preacher starts to get it. Okay, just wanted to let you know in advance. Uh, when I say in and out, what am I talking about? Well, we, we've all seen them. Matter of fact, we all at one time or another may have been them. And the them I'm talking about is the ones who are in and out. The ones who are uh, lukewarm church members at best. The ones who are seasonal worshipers, if you will. Now, if this is speaking to your heart, uh, then God had a word for you this morning. Uh, there's, a, there's a part of me that's just a little... Uh, Mischievous, I guess, maybe. Maybe that's a poor choice of words. Uh, but there's a part of me that always wanted to, to put up uh, poinsettias at Easter. So some of the folks thought they were there on the wrong day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's just be honest. We all know people like that. They just, you know, just kind of in and out. And, and, and that's, that's what it is. The remedy for that situation is the Word of the Lord. The remedy for that situation is a commitment to honoring the Word of the Lord in our lives. What do we think when we think of Peter? Uh, well, some people think of Peter as, as, as kind of a... Uh, one of these rough characters. Some people think of Peter as the man who absolutely made a bigger boast than he could uh, make a commitment to keep. Uh, I think of Peter, and I think of the man who preached and 3,000 were saved. But I also think of the man who denied the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're one of those in and out kind of people, you may be in the company of a man named Peter. <coughs> then there was a, a couple, Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 11, you can go there and read. Uh, something happened. They, they lied, if you will, to the Holy Spirit of God. They were struck dead on the spot. The Acts chapter 5, verse 11 says, And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Listen, what we need today is not a case of of do better. What we need today is not a case of turning over another leaf or a new leaf. What we need today is to hear and act upon the true word of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need. The word of the Lord will also stir those who are out and out. Jeremiah, you remember, he was a good and a godly man. He was a he was God's servant, and God used him to prophesy over and over and over again. He was called the, the weeping prophet because he truly wept over the condition of his people. But his heart was absolutely set on fire by the word of God. That's what we need. We can do going through the motions. What we need is to be set on fire by the Word of God. The Word of God is life, and it will stir and it will arouse us out of complacency. It will create within us a desire, a burden, if you will, to do more for God than what we have done in the past. Listen, there's not a thing that I can do in this world that can ever repay Him for what He's done for me. I can work from now on until the day I die. I can't pay back the debt that I owe to Him. But you know what? Even though I can't pay it back, I believe that He deserves the best that I have to offer. I believe that He deserves everything that I can do in this life. Not to, not to buy His favor and not to earn my place in heaven, but because of who He is. He is worthy this morning. Listen, the Word of God will also bring comfort. I don't know how many times that I have stood by a graveside and I have read that passage from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 
And I've gotten down to that last verse 18, and it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord will comfort your heart if you will allow it to. It will do that all today. We're, we're not lacking for a word from the Lord. It's there. We've got it. It's in our possession. Every home has volumes of it sitting on the counters and in the bookshelves. We're not lacking for a word from there is a word. Jeremiah said it, and I will echo it. There is a word from the Lord. Maybe you're here and you need to hear that word that we say. Maybe you're here and you need to heed that word and be renewed and strengthened and raised up to a place of service. This church time to rise up is right now. Time to listen to and heed the word of the Lord is right now. Uh, let the spirit of the living God flow across your life this morning. I'm here because God has promised that he meets with his people. I'm here because God inhabits the praise of His people. I'm here because I can't be anywhere else. The Word is sufficient to say. The Word is sufficient to direct. The Word of the Lord is sufficient to bring hope, peace, joy, and love and all of the other fruits of the Spirit. <clears throat> if, if, and if we will allow God through His Spirit to speak to our hearts. That's the challenge, but that's also the call. Let's pray. Father, right now, in this precious moment,